I'm Anderson King, this is Indie Picks. Now, I'd like to welcome you to Utrecht in Holland, where we are for the beginning of the Holland Animation Film Festival. We are, in fact, right at this very red dot, which means that we're right outside the film cafe in the middle of town where they're having the opening night. We're going to be seeing all sorts of animators inside, so stick with me as we meet the cream of the animation crop. With screenings of over 600 international films, Utrecht is host to one of the world's largest animation festivals. For the first time in its 15 year history, the festival has a competition for independent animated shorts. This guy, this guy, yeah. mm -hmm. he started the festival. Hello. <laughs> you started the festival? Yeah. Why, why did you start the festival? I started the festival with animation. He was looking for a job. <laughs> yeah. And you found yourself a job from the, from the beginning? Yeah. No, he, it was his idea uh, 15 years ago to start a festival in Holland because okay. there were no screening venues in Holland that and so on. Yeah. Yeah. So he approached people to have a festival in Utrecht. Yep. And then I was working in the film theater, so I started the first festival to organize it. So you organized the whole thing? I that, organized it since the beginning. And that was 15 years ago? It was in 85. 85, okay. Yeah. And Utrecht has a very good uh, festival city because it's compact. Mm -hmm. You have the cinemas very nearby, each cinema. So as a festival city, it's a very nice place. Over a hundred years of history populated by students from 46 countries, the Royal College of Art is arguably the world's most renowned centre for artistic excellence. Industrial design, filmmaking, fashion, painting, sculpture, graphic design, architecture, it's all here. Ridley Scott, Zandra Rhodes, Henry Moore, David Hockney and many, many others have graduated or worked with the RCA over the years, making it the place to watch for new creative talent. Which of course is why we were at the college's recent degree show in London to put the spotlight on those most elusive of artists, the animators. I think you have to be obsessive. I think you have to wake up and eat animation for breakfast. Sylvain Desprez is one of the world's leading storyboard artists. His art is unique in that it crosses boundaries between art, film and illustration. A native of France, Sylvain first met Ridley Scott while working at BBDO advertising agency in New York. Since those days, he's worked with some of the world's leading film directors, like Stanley Kubrick on Eyes Wide Shut and Luc Besson with The Fifth Element. His other film credits include Planet of the Apes, Superman Reborn, The Avengers, Alien Resurrection and of course the Oscar winning Gladiator. I work in the motion picture industry and I work primarily in what's called pre-production, uh, working with directors doing design sketches and images of what they have in mind. There are some jobs that completely elude definition. We sense what they are and what they're about, but it's very hard to pin them down, and I think storyboarding is one of those jobs. Gold Coast Ocean Fest in North Devon, England. And everywhere you look, there's completely chilled out people, but not here, because this is the volleyball court and the men's final is just about to take place. Fortunately, I've got to spend the next half hour looking at men in little shorts, getting very, very hot and sweaty. It's such a shame I get sent on these shoots. <laughs> volleyball is one of the world's most popular sports. Beach volleyball is the sexier form of the six-a-side game, with the two-against-two version spreading to beaches all over the globe. It announced itself to the world in 2000, when the sport debuted at the Sydney Olympics. So what's the difference between the two forms of the game? I would say this is a lot, a lot harder, because it's, it's on sand for a start. It's a lot harder on your legs. 
and uh, yeah, it's, well, you've got to do stuff like that. <laughs> you've really got to work hard to pick balls up because there's only two of you on court. And whereas in indoor volleyball there's six on each side of the court, so it's a, it's a difficult game to master and uh, it's very tiring, as you can tell. <laughs> that's why you're sitting back. And that's why I'm laying easy. back in the deck chair. <laughs> At the Gold Coast Festival, the King of the Beach event brought together some of the UK's leading players. And unlike normal beach volleyball competitions, players compete as individuals in pools of four. Body tactics? Yeah, yeah, we will have. Uh, I'm not going to tell you, though. We won't tell you. <laughs> uh, well, we, we concentrate on uh, who we think is the weaker player out of the pair, and we'll serve on them and hit to them and, and play on them and hope they're going to make the mistakes that we... Uh, and wear them down. Yeah, yeah, they should do. It's been a long day, so hopefully they're getting a bit tired and if we keep picking on one person, he's going to start making mistakes. Colin Patterson won, outscoring his rival to take the King of the Beach title.